Good day, I'm Carl Bodner, your host for the Massac Report. Welcome to our opening edition for the 2010-2011 school year. Today, we have a special program that will introduce you to a new organization to be offered at Massac. This new community interest program is CARE, that's C-A-R-E, which stands for Community Awareness, Response, and Education. Joining me are three members of the Massac faculty who are the vanguard leaders of this program. They are Hope Maloney, chairperson of our pupil service department, guidance counselor Megan Scanlon, and Penny O'Dell, a member of Massac's English department. Our guests will offer responses to several questions that will provide you with the essential information you will need to understand the purpose and values of this program. Without further ado, I will pose the first question to Ms. O'Dell. What gave you the idea for a group like this? Well, I think it came from a lot of places, actually, Carl. I think it kind of came from my own experiences as a parent, and certainly my experiences in the classroom and dialoguing with parents through the years. And it's probably come a little bit from personal experience um, in my own family and from um, some of the communities and the models that I've seen in other towns like Monroe. So it came really from a lot of different a very sources. Plethora of places. Yes. What yes. about you, Megan? What got you into this? Well, um, as Penny had stated, she did start this process and contacted me, and I shared I would absolutely like to be part of this. And I think, you know, before we go further, we've said it's care, but um, this is a group for parents. Very interesting. How about you, Ms. Wong? Uh, well, Penny was the impetus in it and discussed it and coming from position as a counselor, I've seen a need for all of this and uh, consistently have a need and don't really have any resources to offer parents. So it sounded like a wonderful idea when she suggested it. So when we think of all of the stresses that families and communities like ours are under today, this becomes one more facilitative group who can help parents cope with the pace of things that are changing for their youngsters. And become aware. Mm -hmm. And become aware, that sounds great. Let's move to the second question. Ms. Maloney, what models mm -hmm. have you used to plan the group? Um, I checked out Fairfield. Um, I have a friend who is a counselor there and we talked about those groups. I know that Megan went to Newtown and looked at some groups, but a lot of the basis came eventually from a group that Penny was associated with, Karen. And where were those located? Well, actually, there is a facilitator uh, from the R.J. Karen Foundation, which, uh, who's the, it, that's centered in Pennsylvania, but there's a, a facilitator in Ridgefield, and Ridgefield contracted with the Karen Foundation and decided to put an educational piece into their actual school program that was parent education. So it really kind of came from talking to that resource and um, she was just a lot of help. She said it had been very successful in Ridgefield and that parents had really appreciated it. So, so even though this is maybe new to Monroe, we're looking at something that is not genuinely new or unique only to our area. This is something that has a broader base that's crossed at least into the Middle Atlantic states. Oh yeah, definitely, Carl. I think, you know, that old cliche that we used to use when we were raising our children, certainly we talked a number of times about the challenges and that that cliche that they don't give us a textbook for this no, they certainly don't. is true. And parents just really, I think, appreciate and enjoy um, an, uh, uh, an arena in which to express some of their concerns and learn as much as they can about what developmental needs kids have, what transitional needs they might be facing. I just think it's just another area where people can get the help they need. And it certainly Guidance. is a different time when you look at how electronified our cultures have become. Mm. If I make up, a, I make up a word, but I think that's important. So now we get a chance to look at each other inside the boat and realize we have a lot to share because so oh, much yeah. of the time is spent looking outside the boat trying to keep in the right direction. That's right. So, that's okay. right. Well, Ms. Scanlon, please tell us what kind of programs are you planning? 
The programs that we have discussed and come up with along with the Karen representative um, include uh, protective factors, developmental assets. Um, we'd like to talk about internet safety. Like as you say, technology is certainly a big piece. Um, communication skills. How do you communicate with your teenager? Um, what's an effective communication? Um, along with parenting styles um, and boundary setting is certainly included within that. Um, we also hope to cover topics as um, substance abuse use and um, included in that gateway drugs. Um, we again the internet safety along with that I think there's a big piece so we um, will devote a session to bullying um, and again this is all prevention awareness. And the communication is an issue because you know each generation of teens seems to develop their own language mm -hmm. and uh, I know one thing that I find difficult sometimes is they cannot express any sentence without the word like in it at least twice mm -hmm. so it's I think that we have to do that I think in general as schools we need to really start buffing up and working on listening skills and speaking communication skills mm -hmm. and learn how to use our body language mm -hmm. so there certainly is a need for such programs. Well, please tell our audience, how did you select the topics for discussion and how will you ensure confidentiality? Who would like to respond? Well, I can start with that, Carl. I, I think uh, that there probably cannot really be confidentiality in a meeting such as this because it is information giving. Um, certainly, we would appreciate people to share stories they're comfortable sharing, but it isn't a support group. It is clearly a place where we can um, disseminate information, uh, listen to some experts, perhaps listen to some of the experiences that parents have had, what has worked for them, perhaps what challenges they've faced without really um, broaching confidentiality issues. So I think, I, I think, um, I think that kind Well of then it becomes an arena, if I'm understanding you correctly, for a community to really share with one another. And mm -hmm. it's through that sharing process mm -hmm that we can assist one another in coping with the issues we find ourselves facing on a day-to-day -day basis. That's right. I think that the name of the group kind of says it all. I mean, we want to become more aware. We want to respond to what we learn. Um, we want to offer some, some amount of education. I mean, there is no, there's no magic formula for raising children. Everybody knows that, and everybody has their own approach, but we, we thought it would be nice to have a place where we can have that conversation. And in a slight humorous tone, I'll add the fact that there's no manual coming with being a grandparent either in no. helping raise grandchildren. There is not. So I'm maybe this can facilitate that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm certain our viewers would like to hear something from each of you about your background. So Ms. Maloney, please go first. Um, I'm the chairperson for Pupil Services. I've worked as a high school counselor and a middle school counselor. And um, my background is marriage and family therapy. I've also worked uh, substance abuse groups with students. And um, pretty much that's it. Okay. This is Gannon. Um, I've been at Massick for, this is my fourth year as a school counselor. Um, I was fortunate enough to do my internship here as well as I was in grad school. Um, prior to that, my background does include working with special needs children um, and working with teenagers in a residential treatment facility. Well, that certainly identifies a population of parents who have accelerated difficulties because our special needs children just require more, they are in need of more, but are equally deserving. Ms. O'Dell? I've been a teacher at Massac High School since 1985. Um, prior to that, I worked in a few private schools in Connecticut, and before that, I was a teacher in about three public schools in the Florida school system. So I've been teaching a long time. So we, we have a group here who can bring diversity to the table and really offer a broad spectrum to the community mm -hmm. members who choose to participate with our program. Yes, I would hope that we can do that. Thanks for sharing that information. <clears throat> In terms of the mechanics of the program, when and where will you be meeting? Megan, could you tell us? Sure. We have set aside um, seven dates um, once a month 
on Tuesdays, um, and that is admitting September and um, November and June. Okay, so you'll start in October. We'll start in October. Mm -hmm. October 19th will be our first session. Great. <coughs> you know, it might also be a good idea for us to put this on the uh, channel, not only this program, mm -hmm. but a schedule on to Channel 17 so people can pick up, because they certainly may not remember just from hearing us talk about it. Absolutely. I hope we can do that. Finally, Ms. Ms. Sodell, <coughs> yes. uh, tell us what uh, will the group look like? What, what will its composition be? Well, you know, we, we don't... We don't really know, Carl, because that's, that's kind of the adventure of it. I think we have to wait till that first night and see how many people we get. We hope we get a good turnout. Um, we certainly haven't met all of the various facilitators. Um, I think we will probably have a formal presentation followed by conversation, whether it be in groups or possibly, depending on the numbers, uh, a whole session. I'm, I'm not really sure. I think in some ways we're hoping to find our way along through this. Certainly we'll um, have some refreshments, we'll have some informal conversation, and we'll kind of be able to, I think, see how it goes from there. Well, I think I, that we're looking, although we're in the high school, we're opening this up and would like to have parents from middle schools and elementary schools absolutely. come as well. So we're looking absolutely. for it to be um, something that's open to the whole community and hope that we get a selection from mm -hmm. all over to parents, grandparents, other professionals. I, you know, I think the more of a eclectic group we have, the, the more there is to learn. Well, we certainly need to get information dispensed at Jockey Hollow then if we want to accomplish that and hope that we get both moms and dads. Mm -hmm. Very often moms are the stronger initiators, but I think we want to get both mm -hmm. involved. Absolutely. And I think the middle school parents are very essential to get involved. That's exciting and pleasing news for me to hear. Mm -hmm. So we certainly hope it's going to go in that direction. And the first kickoff meeting I think is going to be crucial because that could lead to the all-powerful word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And yes. once you get that going, things begin to change with more rapidity. Right. So, Thank on that point, we will have to close out our discussion. On behalf of the Massive Report, I want to thank you all for joining us and sharing this good news. I'm sure it will prove to be an asset to our community as a whole. I want to thank our viewers for joining us and hope many of you will take advantage of the opportunities to be gained in participating in CARE. Good day and best wishes to you all.